Welcome. Welcome back to the Pro Polto Show. This is the show to happen right there in your household. If you're in your household, please turn it in. Don't turn that channel because this is the show to educate you right there in your household. Let me tell you for breaking news. A lot of breaking news has happened today. It was the broadcast pioneers of all the icons that happen with, with your TV and your radio. Also, I want to tell you, uh, next week's show, next week we're doing a great show. Those of you that are renting your home with option to buy, don't do it. So you don't want to miss next week's show. Also, I want to bring across to your attention, we did a show on here about the person that got scammed by Jamaica. And she got scammed the $16,000, those of you that seen the show. Well, she has a little hobby on the side, and that hobby is... She called me up and she said, I want you to come over and pick up. She crocheted a vest for me for helping her out with the writing to the prime minister. I loved it. But I said, what do you, you did this? You crocheted this? And she said, yes, Pearl Tomate. That's what I do on the side. And I said, if you did this for the people, how much would you charge? $20. You're not going to find this on eBay. $20. So if anybody out there that would like a crocheted vest and holidays are coming up Christmas is coming up you're not going to get a homemade crocheted vest anywhere email me with the color and what you want you can you can PayPal me credit card check money order and I will be the middleman of this and I will tell her how many orders the colors and then I'm the one that'll ship it out to you so it's a good buy let's get we can't get sixteen thousand dollars back but close enough to it my show today my show today I'm a little bit amazed because of my position of who I was years ago. When I heard my the story with my guest today, I said, no way this happens in America. No way. Because years ago, I was an insurance agent, a general agent. And if somebody had a claim, like years ago when I went into a house... And if you had a claim, no matter where you lived, <clears throat> if you had a claim, <clears throat> I would say you turn this over to your insurance company. And if the insurance company did not want to pay, then I would turn it over to my adjuster. And <clears throat> he would come into your house and he would fight with your insurance company. The, you're all used to this of your homeowner. But this is where the nightmare began with my client. And I'm appalled by the fact, you know, people that are working out there, they think everybody doesn't know anything and they get away with murder, not just the consumers, but the higher ups as well. This went so high up from the insurance company to the adjuster, to the contractor. Now I'm going to say a short version, then we're going to go into the long version. How would you like to put a claim in? You own your home. You're retired. How would you like to put a claim in your home? You turn it over to the insurance company. And it's not only you turn it over to the insurance company. Get this. It gets a little bit deeper. This is also a reversed mortgage. She's comfortable. She's retired. No, who, you're in your home. You have a reverse mortgage. You think, this is it. I can retire now for the rest of my life. I'm in my home. My mortgage is getting paid. Then what happens? You put a claim in and the insurance company gets the contractor for you. So you think, well, everything's taking place, which is really great. Everything's taking place in order. The contractor comes out. He tries to do some work, but he damages the work, which we're going to hear. And, and he keeps the money. He wants nothing to do with it anymore. In the meantime, another department comes into her house and says, hey, you got mold all over the place. You got this all over the place. You can't stay here anymore. There's damage. There's no heat. There's no this. You have, we're going to, we're putting a sign on this. You got to move. This is your home. Where is this woman to go? She writes to the insurance commissioner because I mean, it's the insurance company that did this. She writes to the insurance commissioner. The insurance commissioner puts the burden on the attorney general. Oh, I have nothing to do with this. Well, why not? It's the insurance department. Why doesn't he have anything to do with this? We're going to find out. We're going to find out the whole story behind this and why. And then we have another contractor who says, 
wow, I'm not doing any more work in there because of mold, because of this, which we're going to find out. But she's homeless right now because of you, because of the system. Does anybody listen to people out there? Does anybody hear us when we talk? I'm only one voice. Do I have to scream and yell at people and write letters before they say, oh my God, we're scared, we gotta do something? Why can't the average consumer do what I do? Because they get intimidated and these places intimidate them. And here's a woman in her 70s thinking, hey, you know what, I could sit back, lay back, and we're gonna go where she works. She worked her whole life. And you know what, it's pretty sad where our system is taking us. And it's, I'm sure there's many out there like her. We're gonna resolve this problem because we're gonna send to the same insurance company, the same contractor, the same insurance commissioner, the same attorney general's office. We're gonna turn them over to this station, the Pearl Polto Show, to watch her in action, to hear the whole story if you didn't get it, because we're not gonna stop till that you put her back in her home where she should be and anybody out there you know that's listening and will listen I want you we are going to give her number out at the end for you to contact her to say hey even if you're an attorney out there that hears this to say I want to help her I want to welcome my guest I have known her for a while I've never knew she had this problem because why I knew her when she worked for the city I knew her when she worked for the mayor's office. Again, here goes the mayor. But she wasn't, she just didn't retire years ago. She worked for a living. I want to welcome my guest, Francis. Hello. Francis, first of all, I want you to tell the people what kind of work you did in your past. In the past, I worked for A&P Supermarket for 19 years. After a and Supermarket, I was in business for myself where I owned the card and gift shop. After the card and gift shop, I closed it. I went to work for the city of Philadelphia in the Mayor's Office of Community Services. After the Mayor's Office of Community Services, I maintained a job with the Philadelphia Commercial Development Corporation until the time of 19, I'm sorry, year 2002, I retired. Now, when you retired, when did you get and why did you get the reverse mortgage? I took the reverse mortgage in 2006, uh, I believe, because I didn't have a pension and I wanted to do some improvements on my property. Mm -hmm. And uh, Now, what made you think the inver reverse mortgage would have put re done repair work on your property? What did well, they tell you? Well, I talked to my financial advisor, and it was his suggestion of the reverse mortgage. I had never thought of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, he told me that he would handle it. And after working with him for a couple months, I decided to answer an ad I saw on TV regarding reverse mortgage. Okay. Now, I'm, see, I'm for reverse mortgages, but not what they put you through. A reverse mortgage is when a person can sit back and not pay their mortgage again and everything's paid for and they, they either give you a lump sum in a check to pay all your other bills or it's there. How did they do it with you with your Well, mortgage? with me, I took the lump sum and I put an addition onto my property. Okay, they gave you, besides paying your, your mortgage, mortgage, okay, then, then you took a lump sum. I took the lump sum. To put an addition on, on your my property. property. Okay. And then what happened from there? And what happened from there was that uh, I had a roof leak on my property. Okay. I called my insurance company, and I called the insurance adjuster. Now, were you called the insurance company's adjuster or a public adjuster? A the public adjuster. Okay, a public adjuster doesn't work for the insurance company now. No, they don't. They're independent. Independent. Okay, that's and who you called, right? Yes. Okay, go ahead. So I called the public adjuster, and he came out. And I kept telling him that my carpet was buckling and my walls was damp and uh, my room didn't feel like it used to. And he kept telling me there wasn't nothing wrong with my roof. He gave me a certificate for $250 and it wasn't nothing wrong with my roof. Now this is the public adjuster. The public adjuster. Okay, now, so you see the public adjuster fights your insurance company, right? Yes. Okay, so he came in there and he told you, he told you what was happening. Yes. Okay. And so 
I kept arguing with him. So to make a long story short, what happened was I had my daughter at my home one afternoon mm -hmm. when the public justice came. And she overheard their conversation. Mm -hmm. And they were planning how to split the money. Wait and a minute, wait a minute. Who, who was she listening to? I, I'm sorry. She was listening to the insurance adjuster hired by my AAA insurance. Okay. And another outside adjuster from... Uh, now, who hired this other outside adjuster? Or was he in cahoots with the adjuster that came in? With the, in cahoots with the adjuster that came in. Okay, and they were talking about how they were going to split the money? Yes. Okay, it's in a, order... See, a public adjuster comes in, they go over... If, let's say, you have $5,000 of damage and the insurance company says, no, we're only going to pay you two, well, they fight to get you to 5000 That's what a public adjuster does. Uh, yes, but the public adjuster kept telling me, Miss Folk, is nothing wrong with your roof. I said, it is something wrong. My carpet is... Um, buckling okay and it's from dampness i have enough knowledge because i've inspected so much work that doing... was your job, job. All this time okay so you told the public adjuster i don't feel this is right that's and true. what did he do uh the public adjuster came to my house about a week before christmas mm -hmm. and told me i have a check for you and you have two more checks coming the checks are in the mail no wait a minute what are the checks for the checks that was, was being given to me was for... From the insurance company that he got it for? Yeah. For, okay, how much? Like a roundabout, not the exact... Around about $800. Okay, this is what the public adjuster got from the insurance company. Yes. But what was he getting it for? I mean, what did he say the damage was to get you 800 Oh, the damage was for... My, I'm sorry, uh, Pearl. The damage was for my front door and my storm door. So that's all he put in was eight hundred. That's all that I received because they took the thousand dollar deductible from my insurance. Okay. And then they felt as if I could buy a less expensive door. Okay. But what I did, I went back to Goddard, who I bought the doors from previously, and had them to do the work. And they had to wait several months because the money was okay, so tight. Okay. Well, let's that's, that's forward it now because the mm -hmm. the public adjuster got you the eight hundred. Yes. They got you the 800. You got your doors replaced. They gave you the check? Yes. The way it was, the public adjuster, the insurance company sent the check to the public adjuster's office. Correct. And, and you the, had to sign it, though. You were supposed to sign it, too. I was supposed to sign it. but Under here, law. Under law. But here was the mix-up. Why I went to the, uh, the insurance commissioner office. The check went to MedLife. Wait a minute. The check went to MedLife. Now, MedLife, MedLife is my reverse mortgage company. Is the okay? The insurance. The check went to MedLife. So MedLife now had to have two people sign it. Actually, three people: the mortgage company, the the insurance company, and you. Who signed it? I never signed neither check. That so. What happened was I kept calling MedLife, and they said, "Miss Folks, we sent you out the checks." What happened was. The insurance adjuster sent the checks to MedLife. MedLife politely and very neatly printed my name on the checks. Yes, it's supposed to be. And sent the checks back to the adjuster. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's when I saw the checks. So what happened? Did I you sign it? I never signed the checks. So what, what I did, I called the police, uh, the insurance commissioner. You never signed the checks? I never signed those okay. two checks. I I. Went to the insurance commissioner and had the case reopened because my roof was still leaking and my bedroom was getting worse. Okay, now your roof is leaking. Yes. Not still leaking because you didn't say you said it wasn't leaking before, but now it's leaking. It's leaking. It was leaking before, but I couldn't see it. You couldn't see it. Uh, but I could feel it on the okay. floor. And the adjuster couldn't see it either? The adjuster saw the job. They saw the damage because one young fellow said to me, oh, this is a large claim. That his name was Robert. He disappeared. His boss came out. Mm -hmm. And then his boss sent the other two men out. And my daughter just happened to be standing no, at wait a minute, the window. Wait a I'm still confused. They put, a, they put a claim in just for 800 When they didn't go further to see if your roof was leaking. So then the insurance company sends out a check to the adjuster without you seeing it. And you didn't even sign it just for 800 Now... Take us 
further on where when you see your roof is leaking, who did you contact? I contacted the insurance commissioner. Okay, why the insurance commissioner? Because you didn't sign the first check? Uh, no, I contacted the insurance commissioner because my insurance company did not acknowledge my phone calls and they ignored me when I told them that I still had a problem with my roof. Okay. So after contacting the insurance commissioner, um, I called them and I waited to hear back from them. And I received the phone call telling me that your insurance company is going to call you uh, because we have your claim reopened. Because what I did, I called, I, I called MedLife and I asked them to send me a copy of all correspondence. Mm -hmm. And they sent me a copy of checks with my name on them and it wasn't my signature. Okay. So who had to sign these checks was MedLife. actually... Now, did MedLife or the claims adjuster sign these checks? MedLife told me they signed them because they had, because Because the they had the power of attorney change. because of it was a reverse mortgage? Yes. Okay. Now, I got I to gotta check into that because I'm not sure. You still have to sign for it. Now, okay, but after, after they send and they signed your name, they signed your name to these checks, correct? Yes. Now, what happened next? Okay, so after I got all the paperwork, I took it all to the commissioner, as I said, and the case was reopened. But while I was doing, prior to me doing that, my daughter happened to be at my home, and she heard the two men standing outside talking. They did not know she was standing in the window. And she heard their conversation. The men knew of the damage, but they wasn't going to reveal it to me. Why not? I don't know, but I realized it later, and, the tr and it came out later, because when I called back to the insurance company, mm -hmm. I got a new adjuster, I got a new claims rep, I got new everybody. I said, where's the other people I've been dealing with? Oh, they're no longer with the company. So, okay. So, after you put another claim in, then all these, all these new people, new adjusters, and yes. obviously the insurance company hired them now, or the, the mortgage company hired them. The insurance company. The insurance company hired them. Yes. Now, when they came out, what happened? When they came out, they took a look. And... The roof's leaking. Yes. You're seeing all this. What did they do? Okay. They, uh, called, they, they called in a Mr. McIntyre to oversee the whole problem. And Mr. McIntyre waited around two or three weeks before he decided to okay the check for the roofer. The roofer came out to my house three times and put torps on the roof to try to keep the water from coming in. It was Easter Sunday morning. It was raining in my bedroom window. And it was Mother's Day, and it was raining on the side of, side of my house. So they put tarps around. They put it. tarps around. How long were the tarps on? The tarps was on for about a month. So you, had, you lived in there with tarps on your house. Yes. Right? Okay, then what? After that, uh, Mr. McIntyre okayed the check for the roofer. So then he came out and put a, a new roof. A month later? A, a month later. Why didn't they just put a roof on the next day? Because he couldn't get the money authorized for the roofer. And then I... Wait a minute. They couldn't get the money authorized for the roofer. So that was the homeowners or your mortgage company responsible for writing them a check? A homeowner's insurance. So the roofers didn't do nothing but put a tarp on it because they didn't get paid. Yes. And it, you're living in there with a re leaky roof because of... The, the system playing yes. with one another. Yes, and the roofer said, look, I'll do this for you because you seem to be a nice lady. They have, they're not paying me. Every time I come out to put a tarp up, there's $250, and they're not paying me. So, okay, so what's he do? So he waited mm -hmm. until I told him that the check would be in the mail. Mm-hmm. So the check came in the mail, and it was $1,000 less than what he quoted the insurance company and gave me a bill to give the insurance company. Did he fix the roof? He put the roof on. Okay. Now you're in your house. you got a whole new roof. <clears throat> What's next? Next, it was the mold. It was all on the side of my bedroom wall and on the floor. And so my son took a picture of the mold and emailed it to the insurance commissioner. Okay. Is, well, did you contact before the insurance commissioner? Did you send this mold to your insurance company? Uh, no, 
But I told them, and they looked at it. And they didn't, they didn't send anybody out? They didn't, no, they didn't send anybody out. So that's why I went to the insurance commissioner. Okay, because you're still now, you got a new roof, but you're, you're now you got mold. Yes. And no one's helping you out here. No one was helping me out. So, so what did you do next? The roofer <clears throat> had a contractor that he knew that lived not too far from my home. So the contractor came out, went through my home, gave me a bill for 7000 some odd dollars to remove the mold, replace the wall covering, and uh, uh, paint. When the insurance adjuster came out from my homeowner's insurance, I gave him the paperwork. He looked at it, put it in his briefcase, and he sent out a company that he recommended. To do the mold. To do the mold. So during that process, it was a three-part process. One, one gentleman came out, took pictures, took a test of the house. A week later, another gentleman came out and did some testing. Then the mold company came out. They came out in the month of July and around 1, 130, the gentleman said, oh, you have to get a new heating system. We cut the wires. It, it was a mistake. And they were young, and uh, they probably was inexperienced. These are the contractors. The contractors. So they told you they made a mistake. Yes. But they didn't correct it. No. So what did they do? They called their boss. Right. I don't have his name in front of me. I have to do some research for it. And so... Now, let me stop you there. The, the company that made the mistake, that was the Sir Crow, correct? That was, that was Sir Crow. Okay. And so I talked to Sir Crow, a representative. Okay. And he gave me his personal number and his pager, and we talked back and forth for about two weeks. And these are the ones from the Atlantic City? Yes. Okay, go ahead. And Sir Crow sent two men to my house on a Friday afternoon, and my daughter happened to be there, and my very good friend that has a restaurant around the corner. And Sir Crow sent the two men to my house to try to make it comfortable for me to have a place to sleep. Because Hello, they they already made a mistake with your heater, and they're trying to make it comfortable for you to sleep? Yes. They were supposed to be there for the mold. Did they ever correct the mold? They corrected the mold. And in my bedroom, it was one-fourth of my bedroom ceiling is down. Okay, now why is that? Why is one-fourth they, they, down? They, they, they had to cut the ceiling out looking for mold. Okay, so they cut the ceiling out looking for mold. In the midst of it, they cut the, the heater wires. And so you got a hole in your ceiling. You got your heaters... You got your heaters cut, and what did they do after that? <clears throat> you have a lawsuit case against the contractors, as far as I see, but what did you do after that? They, well, they cut half of the floor, carpet up half of the floor, and I had they had to literally move the items out of my bedroom into my spare bedroom. I have a two-bedroom home. And Sarah Grove, two men, said to my daughter and my friend, this house is inhabitable. We're here to try to maybe set up her bed in the other room, but there's no way that we can set up any place for her to sleep in here. We came to try to help, but there's nothing we could do. No, they're the one that made the mistake with the heater. They're from the same company. They didn't send the two young men back. Two older men came back. Now, okay, right now you don't have a ceiling. You don't have a roof. You don't have, you have to still have the mold. You have no heat. And now you wrote back to your insurance company or the insurance commissioner? I wrote back to the insurance commissioner. Okay. And the insurance commissioner sent me a letter telling me they're turning my case over to the attorney general. Now, that, that part I have here, that part you gave me uh, from the attorney general. And the attorney general now, attorney general, the insurance commissioner, you're, you're liable for all... The insurance companies, and it's the insurance companies that hired these contractors. Yes. And yet, you're you're referring her to go to the attorney general. Yes, we know it's a criminal act here right now, but you're in charge of the insurance companies. So what happened after that? Well, I'm waiting to hear from the attorney general's office, and I'm waiting to hear from uh, senior law. Now, wait a minute. Let's go back. Mm -hmm. We're going to go for a little commercial break here because when we come back, we're going to find why she went to senior law now. She's trying to get an attorney to help her out here. It gets worse. We'll be right back. 
I'm consumer protection lawyer Kerry Flitter. You've heard me as a guest on the Pearl Polto Show. We often get calls from consumers complaining about their experience at a car dealership. Very often a dealer will advertise a low interest rate, but when you go to sign for the loan, you get stuck with a higher interest rate. Sometimes they'll blame your credit history, whether that's the real reason or not. There are laws in place that protect consumers from these and other unfair tactics that are sometimes practiced by some of the car dealers. We know the rules that the car dealers have to live by, whether Pennsylvania or New Jersey. If you feel you've been taken advantage of, call us for a no-cost consultation at 888-668-1225. That's 888-668-1225. Or visit our website, consumerslaw.com. That's consumers with an S, consumerslaw.com. If we accept your case, our fees are paid only by the car dealer at the end of your case. 888-668-1225. We'll be happy to work for you. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Pro Pulitzer Show. You know, if you have a story that no one is helping you or no one is listening uh, and you think you need help, please uh, email me. Uh, you can go to my website, propolto.net, and let me know what's going on. My guest today, we're, we're at the stage. I'm amazed. I'm shocked. And I guess, you know, and in one way I'm not shocked because I'm saying this is our system. And all she wanted to do was retire, reverse mortgage, live happily ever after. But it's not happening this way with the insurance company, with the contractors. And now she's got a hole in her roof. And where we ended up, she's got a hole in her roof. She's got mold and no one's helping her. And they want to, you know, and now they broke her heater on top of it. Now, what happened next? Okay, what happened after that was that the insurance company did some research and bought um, an engineer to my home to take a look at the heating system. And the seal is already out and they're still out. Mm -hmm. And... They came up with a solution that the engineer didn't have license to work in the city of Philadelphia, so he recommended the Electric Connection Company. So they sent me correspondence, and I sent it on to my mortgage company. And, and that was for the heater? That's for the heating system. Okay. Because and, they have to correct the heater in order to correct the the mold and the ceiling and everything else, yes. correct? Yeah, they, they clamped out the mold, but my ceilings are still out because they can't close nothing back up because my heating system is it's in out. the ceilings. Okay. okay. So what happened after a period of time, the uh, mortgage company held up the money from July of the year 2011 until April of 2012. Mm-hmm. And they was t giving me different excuses while they was holding up the money, saying that somebody was trying to sue me for fraud, some contractor. And after me contacting... Wait a minute, go back, go back. That sentence that you said, somebody was trying to sue you or she was trying to sue them? Somebody was trying to sue me... For what? For fraud because of some work that I was having done. And to come to find out it was fraudulent. After contacting senior law and a, a senior law called me on a Friday afternoon and said, call the mortgage company so they can release your money. Senior law never told me what uh, uh, transpired and why they held my money so long. And Medlife... Now, wait a minute. What did the money have to do with everything? The money, the money was supposed to pay the money these contractors to help you with the... Okay. Now, wait, here's where I'm confused at. The money was supposed to help you get this heater back in control. Yes. But if you want the senior law, why didn't they see who damaged your heater, and to sue them. I gave senior law all the correspondence that I passed on to the insurance commissioner mm -hmm. and senior law. Uh, at that time, I didn't ask senior law about my heating system. I, I went to senior law to get my money released so I could take care of my responsibilities, not knowing that I was going to have this problem with my heating system. So they didn't know about it? They didn't know about it. The lawyers at senior law did not know about it? Uh, no. Okay. So what happened was they knew that they had money there for me, but I didn't break it down to what increments. Now, uh, Electric Connection wanted uh, $3,700 roughly a deposit to start the work for my heating system. Okay. 
Okay, they requested a check without my name on it. Now, wait a minute. Where were you all this time? I was staying in a hotel, the Marriott, up until, I think, in September. Now, why were you at the Marriott? Why were you out of your own home? I was out of my own home because the insurance company say they would pay for me a place to live until I got my heating system back. And because I, uh, there was nowhere I could live in the house. And so once they released the money for the heating system, they sent me a letter telling me they could no longer pay for me to stay out of my home. So I've been so they homeless. they want to pay now. Now they can't pay you anymore. So they're writing you by saying it's costing too much. We can't pay. We can't, we can't give you money now to stay at hotels so you're on your own. That's what they told me. So I asked them very nicely, can you pay, can you find me a, a, a short-term apartment? I need some place to live. They told me, see if you could find a relative or a friend, and we'll pay them $30 a day. So in the meantime, you're still waiting for the, your heater to be corrected. Yes. So you could, if they're wasting all this money on hotels, why don't they just pay the electrician that they got to complete the heater? I had gotten an estimate. The, the insurance company did say to me, uh, see if you can find uh, someone to can replace your heater. I went in the yellow pages. I got three estimates right. from three different companies throughout the Northeast. Right. The insurance company said to me, we're not going to pay this kind of money. What kind of money was it? It was $1,700 for two companies. and one. 1700 is nothing. I'm, I'm sorry, $17,000. Okay. And, okay. and then the third company was $18,000. Now the what were they putting in a new moon or what? A, I mean, a heater doesn't cost seventeen thousand. Uh, they were putting in a new radiant heating system. Now, before these three estimates, a estimate was given to my insurance company by a company that I found on the internet, and the gentleman came out and told the insurance company. A job like this will run anywhere from a thousand to twenty thousand dollars. And the insurance companies say you're ridiculous. Now, that was over a year ago. Mm -hmm. I contacted the same company back uh, about two months ago, mm -hmm. and they came out to my house again. Mm -hmm. And he told me he couldn't get involved with the legal part of it of waiting for money from insurance company. If I was willing to pay, they could do the work, but they wasn't going to wait for insurance company. But they still didn't give you a price. Uh, he told me about twenty thousand dollars. Now, when you say twenty thousand, what kind of house do you live in that has so much of a heater of twenty thousand? Not even your best heat homes that has you know you replace a whole brand new heater. The way it was explained to me that the heating system is a European heating system, radiant heat. Well, then they change would have it. To, change it to an American made. They would have to order the parts from Europe, and it would take eight weeks. Well, that's if you wanted the European, but can't somebody that's in, in business say, we can convert this? I went to 17th and Spring Garden right, to the electric, uh, electrical of, um, union mm -hmm. to see if I could find an electrician or a heating right. company. And I was told that they have somebody to call me. The company that called me told me that they don't do residential heating, only commercial heating. And for a whole year, I've been throughout the city trying to find somebody that Well, you know does. what? I'm going to contact one of our people. His okay. His name is George. And I'm going to have George call you. Okay. Uh, so you can get back in your house and have him. And at the same time, have your... Now, when these people finish the job, let's say the guy that I have finishes the job, then your insurance company will pay the person? That's what I'm hoping. Okay. In the midst of it all, I think, you know, I, this is pretty sad because right now you're homeless. I'm homeless and, and I'm tired and I'm disgusted. And, and the, here's, here's the part I don't understand. You want to have a lawsuit case against this one that, that just did the damage and just walks away as if nothing had happened. And I don't he's know sending me a, a bill. <laughs> he's sending you a bill on top of it. In the meantime, he did more debt. I would have been at my attorney's office so quick to put a lawsuit case against him that quick. Second of all, the only right thing you did is you wrote to the insurance commissioner to complain about the insurance company, and they just dished it off. And I'll tell you why they turned it over to the attorney general, because there's crimes here. 
there's crimes here, and I think the insurance commissioner sees it. So, but he's taking the heavy off himself and putting it. He did what he what he did was he put a copy of it to the attorney general, so the attorney general would see that the insurance commissioner was a part of it. But I think the letter or what you're trying to, and now your 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 insurance, not your insurance company, your mortgage company is changing hands too. So it's really up in the air because you're you're out in the dark. They really don't care about you. No, they don't. And uh, they they called me periodically. It, it said, why aren't you back in your house? And I try to explain it to them. They tell me, put it in writing. I don't think they understood. Personally, as a consumer advocate myself, uh, I didn't understand. Because, and I'll tell you why. Nothing against you because I understand all this field. Being an insurance agent, dealing with the attorney general, dealing with the insurance commissioner. I know how they're looking at this. They're looking at this and bits and pieces. And they did not, not understand it. And I wanted you I on my show because I wanted it to be like a story where what made you be homeless and what made these companies, to me, it starts with the contractor. It start, Now, the questions I have to ask is, who hired this contractor? Did you? No, I didn't. Mr. McIntyre that was so hired. So Mr. McIntyre is part of the insurance company, correct? Yes. He represents the insurance company. He's so the agent for them. He's an agent for the insurance company. Now, interesting, because he's an agent for the insurance company, and he's the one that recommended this company. Yes. So did you ever go back to him to say, what? look what your men did? Uh, yes, I went back to Mr. McIntyre because I had another problem. And uh, he came out, and we talked. And then again, I had my daughter there because I may make sure that I always have somebody around when I'm dealing with this uh -huh. situation. And Mr. McIntyre told me he would contact Mr. White from the insurance company, see if he can get the case reopened, but he can't make me any guarantees. No, he's not going to make you guarantees because he's a part of it. He's a part of it. And Mr. McIntyre, if you're out there, you're the one who gave her these contractors. It should have been you the taking care of your agent and the taking care of these contractors. I'm not even sure they're in business or if they're even licensed from what they're doing. I think you took advantage of an old lady. That's what I think. And she's not even an old lady. But I think you took advantage of a senior citizen. And you know what? And everybody's... I'm upset because I'm in the business, was in the business of the insurance business. And I know what goes on. I know what goes on. And I deal with adjusters and public adjusters and how they fight with the insurance companies. In your case, you're dealing with, and this, this is going to turn people away from the reverse mortgage. And the reason why I'm saying that is because I want another person to watch this show that I deal with. That's all he does is reverse mortgages. I want him to watch this to see if he can help you out as well. And I'm going to have him watch, have you, him watch this besides okay. me writing to all these companies because you need another reverse mortgage that one that's on your behalf, not somebody that's doing their own thing. They're holding checks. They're holding checks from the company. I don't know what I would do. I know I wouldn't be out at a hotel. I know I wouldn't be homeless. I would have to be screaming to say somebody's going to be held liable and you can't because... And you work for the city, so this is what you did for a living even. You helped other people. It's been so hard, and I just try to, uh, I'm, I'm trying not to break down. I mean, it's, it's really rough. Tell the people out there that are in the same situation before they get into your situation what not to do. What not to do is always have a second party to listen as a witness and... Don't sign anything unless you definitely have to. And always get your own contractors. Don't let nobody refer anybody to you. So you trusted everybody? I trusted them. You trusted everybody? Yes. And this is what you get for it? Yes. And now you're in a corner where you don't, you're, you feel like a, you know, an animal that's caged in, and you have a home somewhere. Because I had my own contractors. They wouldn't accept them. They wouldn't accept your they own contract. I gave them the estimates, written estimates for my own contract. Now, let me ask you, how come they wouldn't accept it? That's a good question. I don't know. I gave it to them. I, I, I even had my contractor come and meet the insurance adjuster. They talked. 
Mm -hmm. And I told the insurance people, this is who I want to do the work. And what did they say? Uh, he just brushed it off, and he sent sure. He brushed it off. I'll tell you why he brushed it off. He brushed it off because he wanted his own people to do it. He wanted to make a commission or some kind of a feedback, or that's one reason why he brushed it off. The other one is he thought you were going to keep the money and not hire somebody. So that's the only way they, they think in, in, in the, the insurance part. They either thought they wanted their own money to, so they can get a commission off of it, or they were they didn't trust you and thought you were going to keep the check, one or the other. It normally works where the insurance company will give you the check and then to make sure the work is done. That's how it normally works. And these contractors, who's at fault? Is this Mr. M McIntyre? He should have done a follow-up with all this, including the guys he brought out to your house. I called him at, uh, to talk to him about the electric connection. And he told me his secretary went in the yellow pages and found the company. So he's getting himself out of trouble by saying he didn't even refer them. But, you know, the, it, the truth is going to come out. But the correspondence on the letters went to Mr. McIntyre before they got to me. You know, the truth is going to come out because uh, on your behalf, uh, if you give me the authorization, and I'm sure you will, I'm going to write to these companies, and and they're going to write me back. Who's at fault? Who wasn't at fault? What happened? And we're going to see where the blame lies. And then I'm going to have my guy call you, and after I get all this done, to get you back in this place. Because it doesn't take, it only takes 24 to 48 hours to put a whole new heater in. You don't live in Hollywood, where it takes four days you live in a, in a home in Philadelphia. I had a whole new heating system put in my home. And that took not even 24 hours. I didn't have to go to Europe. I didn't have to have a part. So all this is all excess parts. When you want something, you know, people, why is it when you want something and you're an ordinary consumer, you can't get it? I mean, then you think there's something wrong. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm rare, but maybe uh, maybe Irv Homer taught me. I don't know, but I won't put up with any of this. And and to see people, but to see my guest homeless if they're working all those years. So you picture yourself working for a lifetime, wanting to retire, and this is what you get out of it. She's scared to death. She's living at every member of her family, if not in a hotel room. And it's you, we have to help. We have to help each other. And if you have the biggest mouth on the street, then use it. Because something, if you're an attorney out there that's listening, if you're an attorney that says, hey, I want her case, please contact me. Please contact me at the uh, Pearl Polto, 1-800-876-CREDIT. But anyone, give your number out. Give your number out, Francis, because if we have an attorney or even a contractor watching, I want them What's your, what's your number that they can reach you at? My number is area code 215-235-3678. Okay. Now, if you're an attorney out there and you see there's a liable lawsuit, and I know there is, and I'm sure you know there is because I'm going to help her with this as well. But uh, this woman needs help to get in her home before the winter and not to be homeless because of a mortgage company, because of contractors, because of electrician company, because of everyone that made mistakes. And it wasn't even the heater. It wasn't even the heater. This is pretty sad what's going on in our country today. The good news, the voters. We did a couple weeks ago, we made it on the voters registration. And you, as you heard on the news, you know, they're postponing this and everything else with the voters ID. So that's good news. I think I emailed this to everybody out there, to the congressmen, to the senators, and we weren't going to put up with it. Actually, Ron and I were going to not vote or do a picket in front of the voting place, but I think it, it, it hit home because they don't want a catastrophe on Election Day with this president coming in. So when you want something done, you know, let's join forces. If you have a problem, I'm going to repeat this again because if you have a problem and you don't know where to turn to, I, I, you know, I talked to the media today because of the broadcast pioneer. That's what we are. It's the media all coming to lunch and all joining forces. And I was telling them, I was telling the one person about the show tonight. And I said, the problem with the news is 
You know, you go on for five minutes, like the woman that we had here that her son was molested. Did the news put you on for five minutes and then it's over? The news is over. They made their news. It's over. Nothing that they're doing wrong, but it's news of the day. They can't take on each story. And as they said to me, Pearl, at least you're taking on each story in a hold. And as you're taking on each story, you were correcting what's going on. And then it becomes news again. Believe it or not, it becomes news again. This may not be news to the media, but it definitely is a lawsuit case. It's definitely a criminal act on somebody's part that I see. And I'm a paralegal, but as a consumer advocate, I see a lot of violations here that shouldn't have had to happen to one person. And if they think you're going to sweep her under the carpet, hello, she came to the right place. She came to the Pearl Polto show, and this we're not going to let it happen here. I'm going to direct everybody to go to the YouTube to watch this, to watch her story. As I'm writing these letters, I'm going to direct all of you to listen to this story because it shouldn't happen to a person in America. It shouldn't happen to the person in any city. They should be homeless. I mean, we're losing our homes. We're in foreclosures. <coughs> we're doing everything with our homes. The banks are taking our home. And now you're going to take your home because you hired a wrong contractor? What's wrong with us? And I said us because I'm also a consumer. So, you know, people, wake up. Wake up. I want to thank you for coming on. And thank you, Pearl. Telling your story because it shouldn't have to be. And, you know, and I'm going to give you an update because we're going to do a follow-up on this. We're going to make it happen, okay? Okay. When you're back in your home, I want to announce, just like I want to announce with this vest. Anybody out there, don't forget. If you want a vest, a crocheted vest, it's only $20, you email me the color you want. This is the woman that got scammed while she's she's making vests. And as you see, this is lavender. She gave it to me for helping her. And uh, and when I told her, you know, when she said what she did, she said she would only charge $20. I said, you're crazy, but I'm letting it, everybody out there know. If you want for Christmas gifts, a crocheted, go to my website, email me, and say, I would like it in, in color. Give your credit card to me personally or whatever. Bill, check or money order. It's only $20. And give your address, and I will ship it to you. She said, I asked her how long it takes. Only a couple days. Hello? You'll have it within so many days with it. So uh, I told her I would do her that favor for her. Uh, this is Pearl Polto. Don't forget next week. We got a great show next week. Rent with option to buy. What a horror story. And I was endorsing that for a while. Not anymore. I'm hearing more horror stories with that. We got a lot of good shows coming up. We got October 24th. People... Keep that date on your mind because this is the big C, the cancer show I'm going to do. There is a cure for cancer, and we're going to have the people here to prove it to you. And this is when we're going to really make hell break loose. We have uh, we have a lot of good shows coming on here, and you don't want to miss it. We also have the city with the drugs and alcohol, where to go. So we have, we're going to make some good shows. We're also going to do a show on the homeless. Yeah, the homeless. And I'm the one that's going to be the homeless. You don't want to miss that one either. So we got a lot of good shows coming up. This is Pearl Polto, as always, making the most of your credit, giving credit where credit's due. This is not for the system today. See you next week. Interest.